In this video, we're going to create a brand new LazyNet configuration from scratch, and then we're going to navigate through the developer and show you which tools are available. Previously to starting this video, we are hoping that you have LazyNet installed on your machine and that you have a service installed and licensed. You should also have an admin user configured that has access to this configuration. So we're going to open up the LazyNet developer and we are going to connect to our server. So if you have a drop down, you may have multiple servers, but we are going to be working on the local host and what we have installed locally on this machine. So I connect to this server and use my admin credentials to log in. And from here, you get access to see what configurations you already have available. This may be blank at the moment. So what we want to do is go to new configuration to add a brand new configuration, and you can call this whatever you like. You can also give it a description and the server instance. However, we're going to set this later on in another video. You also need to select your default regional profile. Now this in here, I'm going to set as English United Kingdom, but typically you can change this later on. But the main thing to, to be of note is that this uses the currency and time and date formats that you want to use in your default configuration. You can add additional regional profiles later on. Press OK. And we now have a completely blank configuration in LazyNet. Now in the developer, first of all, we have our modules page, and this is where we will set our inputs, our engines, and our outputs. And we will come onto that in a later video. We also have our servers where we can connect to a different server environment if we need to, or multiple servers. We also have our forms. This is where you add your templates. Subforms, which is where you add templates that can be used against multiple forms and other templates. And the same with phrases, but this works for RTF documents. So this should be your, your text output. We have resources. And this is where you set things like your fonts, your grab files, any images or branding that you may use. Um, and again, we can look at that a bit later on. And we have our scripts. This is where you can set any JavaScripts that you need that may do some kind of data manipulation or transformation. We can add commands, and these are database con commands and connections where you may want to pull in additional data and enrich your data from an external database source. We have modifiers, and this is where you can use objects that further help uh, transform data within your configuration. At the top of the page, you can see here, we have where we can deploy and patch and commit any changes that we have in our configuration. Again, this will be covered in a later video.